guys, I'm Suave Ross, and in today's video, I'll be doing a Frenchie watercolor tutorial. Let's get into it. I've been a freelance painter and graphic designer for several years now, and lately I've been doing a lot of dog portraits. So I figured I'd show you guys how I did one of my most recent commissions, a pair of really cute Frenchie puppies for a Christmas present. I painted this over on my Twitch channel, link in the description if you want to come join me paint live. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into the tutorial. When I start out with a sketch, what I like to do is break down what I see into simple shapes. So the dog's head, body, legs, and paws can each be simplified into several different circles and ovals. I hold the pencil towards the end to get it really loose in my hand so I can make really fluid pencil strokes and start creating really messy looking shapes. And from there, I start to carve out the outline of the dogs using the shapes I've made to guide me, making sure all the sizes stay about the same. From there, I guesstimate where the eyes and nose will go and adjust the position of them as I measure out the proportions of the face in relation to the rest of the body. With the proportions done, I can start finishing up the drawing portion with a tighter grip on my pencil to make the outlines more precise. With all that done, now I can outline the drawing in my handy dandy micron pen and get started on the watercolor. So the most important thing I can emphasize about watercolor is layers. The first layer of watercolor is just getting the basic color down. I'll do a very light wash of browns to match the dog's fur and grays and red to match the dog's super cute sweaters. Once that dries, I start to darken the shadows with another layer of the same color I had previously used. With the first couple layers of watercolor dried, I start to go in with different hues to layer on top to make the puppies look more dynamic. When it comes to the eyes, the key is to think of it as a sphere sitting inside of the eyelids. Try and imagine what it would look like for a ball to have shadows on it. There's going to be a shadow cast from the upper and lower lid, a highlight, and a midtone. From there, it's pretty much the same process over and over. Put down a light wash of color and continue to increase the contrast of the shadows and the highlights. Just make sure it dries completely before you start painting on top of it again to ensure the paper warps as little as possible. If you break drawing down into basic shapes and ideas, it makes the process a lot less overwhelming and confusing. Right now I'm just adding some browns and pink tones on the puppy's face. Now there are times when I'll paint something that's either way too dark or not the right color at all. So what I'll do is just wash the brush in water really quick after I've put it down on the paper. I'll lightly dab the brush on a paper towel and just paint over the color you want to fix and use that water to basically erase the color underneath that you want to get rid of. You can also dab the color with a paper towel to soak it up as long as that color is still wet. Watercolor can actually be pretty forgiving. I think people are intimidated by watercolor a lot because it seems so final, but if you're able to use watercolor quickly and use the water to your advantage, you can pretty much erase anything you want. As I start adding each layer of color on top of the next, the fur looks much more accurate to the picture, rather than if I would have just used the same color of browns and blacks the whole time. Can we just talk about how cute these dog sweaters are? I think one of my favorite things in the world are dogs and sweaters. Now jumping ahead a little bit, the other really important thing to make dogs feel grounded, or really anything feel grounded on a painting, is by adding a drop shadow. Shadows will make them come to the foreground and feel like they're popping off the page. I like the darkest part of the shadow, touching the outline of the dogs, and then gradually go from dark to light, just using a light wash of color. And for the finishing touch, I love adding little splishy splashies. It just adds a little bit of pizzazz, and it's just really fun for me. If I do mess up, all I have to do is just dab it up with a paper towel, and it will be all good. And once that's dry, I'll go back over it with a micron pen to make the dog stand out from the background even more. And just like that, you're done with a dog painting. 
So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll definitely be posting more tutorials in the future. So if you are interested in that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when I post my next video. And if you do want to see me paint live, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Oh, also, if you're curious about the products I'm using, I posted a video that goes into detail about all the products you need to start painting using watercolors. So I'll see you guys over there in that video. Bye!